we're going to talk a little bit about this connector and go over some of the finer points and nits and nats that are associated with this. This plug has a what's known as a strict fitment range of uh, insulated conductors of 1.05 to 1.25 millimeters. Now, in reality and practice, because Ethernet cable conductors insulation tends to vary up and down 0 0.003 millimeter, if your spec sheet says 1.08 to 1.22, that is the correct range you should look for when matching this plug to a cable. The strict fitment range is the actual fitment range. Insulated conductors around the Ethernet insulated conductor uh, diameters don't tend to always be exactly the same, even on the same bundle of cable. The plug is constructed in such a way that the uh, rear of it is all metal and conductive for bonding your cable shield. There is a pla plastic starts right after this point in the plug. So all that's necessary is to seat the cable jacket to this point, which is right after the strain latch, and it's this drop-off ledge. All, this, all you have to do is seat it to there to achieve your half-inch untwist from this point to the golden contacts, and that's sufficient. It also has an external ground tab, but Quite frankly, you can bond your cable shield multiple ways with this plug, and you can use the external ground tab and coil up the drain wire under it like some people do. You can fold back the cable shield and coil up the drain wire if you like. We use copper fabric strips for that. The strain relief functions more at, well, I should say the external ground tab, it functions more as a strain relief for this particular plug because you can do the bonding on the inside because there's metal here rather than having to worry about bonding out here. So that makes it very versatile. There's lots of different ways to get the cable shield bonded to the hardware. When working with RJ45 8P8C plugs, it should be noted that, uh, when, especially when you're working with solid copper ethernet, that you should restrict your use of these plugs to a single end of your cable run only. The other end should be like a keystone jack or maybe even a field termination plug something a little more mechanically stable than an RJ45 is. RJ45s may give you inconsistent results in the field, and it's just the nature of the beast by hand terminating these kinds of things onto solid copper ethernet. So just be aware that at times you are going to need uh, to use an RJ45 at, a, at one end of your cable, like to plug in a PoE device like an access point or a camera or something like that, and in this case you would have to use this. Our large slip-on boot fits this particular plug and most of our large shielded cable. Just be aware that if you use the slip-on boot, it will add thickness to uh, both sides of this plug and cause issues with putting it into a high-density switch. So when you go to put one cable, one plug this way and one plug this way, if they have boots on them, you're going to have a conflict. So we recommend at the switch end to just use factory pre-terminated patch cords. Don't, don't try to use these guys. Uh, you should be using a patch panel to patch cords anyway. So um, with that pretty much out of the way, we're going to get into some of the tools that are recommended to put this plug on with success.